The Toyota Camry is the best-selling sedan in the US, and rightfully so. While it doesn't bask in the limelight and its sporty personality is a little misleading, its approach to a family ride is refreshing for today's market, and I'll show you why. If you enjoy fun, detailed car content without fluff, consider subscribing and hitting the bell for notifications. The Camry has been the rock of Toyota's lineup for quite some time, and for 2023 it continues with very few changes. Well, really just one. And that's the refreshed nightshade trim that includes tweaks like bronze wheels, which do look mighty cool, especially with the new for nightshade Reservoir Blue, which is a properly mean combo for a Camry, and that's gonna be available for SE. You'll have four main trims with the Camry, the LE, SE, XLE, and XSE. All of those trims will be available with the hybrid or the standard four cylinder, where the V6 will be only available with the XLE, XSE, and then a TRD edition, which really takes the aggression to a completely different level. Even the regular sport trims can be detected by a few changes in the grille and along the sides of it, and they even do have their own sport tuned suspension, so it's not just 100% looks. I'm not gonna talk too much about aesthetics, but I do think for the most part it's a little overbearing considering the actual personality of the car, but it does help it stand out a little bit in parking lots. This is all subjective, so let me know what you guys think in the comments section. All Camrys will get bi-LED lights, with XLE and up trims getting the LED daytime running lights. Under the hood, you have a 2.5 liter naturally aspirated inline four, making about 203 horsepower to 206 horsepower and 182 pound feet to 186 pound feet of torque, depending on which trim and all wheel drive, but that's kind of getting into the fine print. And unlike basically all of its direct competitors, the Camry still offers a V6 if you want more grunt. And it's not just a little more, it's 300 horsepower. The only downside is that it makes peak torque around 4,700 RPM. So it is something that kind of needs to be wrung out to really feel the extent of the V6. What hampers this thing more is the eight speed automatic transmission. It's tuned for fuel economy, so it's constantly trying to be in the highest gear possible, resulting in sometimes uh, an unrefined experience when just trying to accelerate gently up a hill. But this issue is completely resolved if you go with the hybrid. So that setup is going to make something around 210 horsepower. Toyota doesn't give an exact torque figure, but the similar power plant in the Toyota RAV4 gave me a zero to 60 of 6.9 seconds. Kind of blazing for that thing, and that had all wheel drive. You can get all wheel drive with the Camry, but that's only gonna come on the base 2.5 liter non-hybrid setup. The electrified version uses a 118 horsepower electric drive motor and then a separate motor for charging the battery, all of which use Toyota's D4S system, which combines direct injection and port fuel injection. That way it can keep the intake valves clean for many years to come and still improve efficiency. And if you'd like to improve your buying experience, let me recommend Royal South Toyota in Bloomington, Indiana. The kind staff there let me test drive a couple Camrys for this review. Royal South is a straightforward, established dealer here with a diverse inventory. If you're in the market, check them out. Unlike some other new Toyota hybrids, the Camry hybrid embarrasses the already impressive standard car in MPGs. You can get up to 53, which is kind of staggering for what it is, definitely encroaching on Prius territory. And the CVT in there isn't exactly your usual CVT, it is still continuously variable. It uses the charging motor to control the speed of the planetary gear sets and helps incorporate the drive motor or gas engine differently for various scenarios. The result is you press the gas, it immediately responds with electric torque and takes the engine to the exact RPM that you need to be at. It might get a little annoying to some people because the RPMs do jump and drop kind of quickly, but it is effective and much more responsive than the powertrain that I'm in currently. And it will also be a little bit quicker. But let's find out what the regular model does to 60. For this test, I'll just shut off traction control, shut off AC, and then put it in sport, which all cars will get sport mode, but you will have to go with one of these sport trimmed models in order to get paddle shifters. But you'll still get Toyota's kind of special manual mode in every trim. Very little drama off the line. Eight speed has some pretty good aggressive ratios. 
That was pretty smooth, adequate thrust. 60 came up in eight seconds. Admittedly, we started to go a little bit more downhill at the end there, but with a 2,900 foot DA, that's respectable. Just a little disappointing given the power to weight ratio. It's part of the downside of having an engine that makes peak figures high in the rev range. The smooth and strong lines continue around the side and rear of the Camry. I also like the wheels. These are 18 inch alloys. You'll have 17s on the base, 18s on the XLE, 19s on the XSE. One thing I really should note, and this applies to a lot of different Toyota vehicles, is they offer a complete plethora of different packages packages on each trim. It can be a little frustrating because if you want one of those specific packages right now, it's going to be kind of hard to find, borderline impossible. So I'll try to just hit some of the bigger standard and available features here for you, like proximity smart key unlock and lock. It's not going to come on the SE or LE trim unless you find one with the convenience package. It's standard elsewhere. One rule of thumb, the SE is an LE with special sauce, as is the XSE to the XLE. Exclude for the TRD. Really, it's kind of its own thing and more of a base spec just loaded up with as many sporty things as they could imagine. Another thing that you'll get with the racy Camrys is a spoiler. Something that is rightfully enlarged on the TRD spec. While acceleration in the four banger is about as exciting as a person whose personality is Greek life, at higher velocities the engine doesn't lose much motivation and gas mileage is 39 on the highway with the trusty 2.5. But if you spec it with all-wheel drive, the EPA ratings rivals a similarly priced all-wheel drive RAV4 but still better than the V6 front drive only Camry. Put the transmission into eco mode and you really have to kick it in the crotch to wake it up. Accelerating up to highway speed is a pretty easy task for the thing. Traveling about 65 miles per hour in eco mode, we're looking at around 1600, 1700 RPM. Road noise and wind noise are pronounced, but seems about average for the class. It does feel like it'd be a really nice highway family cruiser because of its composure at speed. Reasonable noise levels, low RPMs, and that manual shift mode, which basically allows you to manual shift or really just select the highest gear that the transmission is willing to go into. So if you're in a hilly area and you wanna keep it below seventh gear, but still let the car handle everything, you can do that. But another thing that makes this very road trip worthy is it's plush, simple interior. While I never found the interior of the Toyota Camry to be cutting edge, it's definitely starting to show its age even more since this came out in 2018. And it's weird to think that makes this six model years old now. Anyway, the big highlights for me are pretty good ergonomics. My elbows rest perfectly even on pretty soft materials, even with this lower grade interior. Seeing out of the car is very easy. You have pretty low window lines. Everything is very easy to grab. I like that they retain manual controls for pretty much everything. And the build quality also stands out. Nothing in here really creaks or rattles when you're driving. And I like how the steering wheel feels in the hand and there's not you know, a ton of gloss black plastic down here. It looks and feels like something that'll stand the test of time. And the standard user interface for 2023 is still Toyota's now previous gen systems. It's at least simple to use. Response time is barely acceptable here with my seven inch display, but you can get a nine inch unit that's a little bit better, but the resolution and overall screen quality just seems behind of the class now. You do have standard Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, but you're also missing wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. The 9-inch setup is standard on the XLE and optional elsewhere, except for the TRD. A 9-speaker JBL sound system is available on all but the SE and LE. Here with the 6-speaker, at least you do have, you know, tweeters up there, but the sound quality is just okay. One thing that Toyota does nail, though, are seats. So on every single car, you'll have lumbar adjustment, and every car except for the bass trim, will have you know, either a soft text like in the sport models or just plain leather on the XLE. You'll have to make do with cloth on the base car. Something I can live with so long as they keep the supportive cushy feel with good enough bolstering for brisk cornering. You'll also all have dual zone automatic climate control, except for the TRD for some reason. That's just regular automatic climate control. I guess it's the price you pay for life on the edge. Each car will also get a simple multi-function display with big analog gauges. Optional is a somewhat digital gauge cluster. Also available are plenty of features. Like you can get a wireless charger on the base trim if you can find one actually specced like that. Same goes with the heated seats, which are standard on the XLE. If you want an opulent Camry experience, get an XLE with driver assist package, which gives you things like a low quality 360 camera, ventilated front seats, and a heads up display. 
Higher specs and all-wheel drive models also get an electronic parking brake. Take notice, the Camry gets expensive quick with options, so I am perfectly happy with this SE. For 29 grand, some competitors will outdo this in features or tech, but the simplicity, materials, and solid feel are good trade-offs. I just wish the front doors sounded less hollow. I still appreciate its very quality forward approach. It's tight panel gaps and some more fun lines and textures to kind of keep it from being too boring, which adds to the attention to detail aspect of here, including adding covers for the USB ports and outlets. While I do have good headroom and more than enough legroom, it does feel like a tighter cockpit than a lot of small SUVs, which is a typical downside to this form factor, but I still think the overall space is good for most small families. With the front seat set to a comfortable yet not excessive position for my six foot three self, I have plenty of space. I have a couple inches for my knees there, my head still has an inch, and there's space underneath the seat where I can put my feet. And there's still nice-ish rest points with a center armrest to come down. The downsides to it include less than ideal levels of thigh support because the floor is just a little bit higher than a lot of small SUVs or even some of its own competitors, and you're also missing rear seat vents on the base trims. The trunk of the Camry is not going to be SUV replacing size, but it's close to it, and it has nice little practical bits like standard rear seat releases. Underneath there'll be a spare tire and still a really respectable amount of height and width. The overall space isn't going to exactly shock you if you're coming from another mid-sized sedan, but it seems like it would be more than enough for a vast majority of four-person trips. Plus the opening makes egress and degress surprisingly reasonable. Now here in the SE we're technically going to have sport tuned shocks and springs and that's something that really almost ruined the Toyota Tundra's ride when I drove that a while ago but I'm pleasantly surprised here if you get the sport tuned suspension even on this really poor road the car is very smooth and comfortable and I'll drive the regular suspension here soon. Toyota does a really good job with hampering secondary movements when you hit a bump it ugh, really good brakes too. Actually, I, I, that's something I do want to talk about. They're not as grabby as a lot of new cars these days, but it does make it pretty easy to modulate and, I mean, press a little harder and you'll get to stop quicker. But as I was saying, Toyota does a good job with reducing secondary movements. You hit something even a little bit larger and the cabin reacts and then stops. It doesn't jiggle about. You're going to have independent suspension all around here and that's a benefit to it. Even with the sport tune suspension, it's not exactly stiff. Yet its composure impressed me for a car that is notoriously known as the anti-driver's car. With a used XLE on the exact same roads, there's a slight but noticeable difference with the suspension. It is just a little bit softer and I think that the SE is a little bit more taut. You know, I wouldn't say that either or is like a must have a you know, difference that really makes the car. But if I could choose any spec, I think I would go with the sport tune suspension because there's really not much of a penalty for it. If I keep it in sport, the transmission still doesn't want to kick down as many gears as maybe you might want, but it does react a little bit more urgently to your throttle inputs. On this sort of twisty, imperfect road. The Camry is not fun to drive, but it does feel capable. It doesn't react super quick on center, but it still has a quick enough steering ratio where it doesn't feel uh, you know, like a larger SUV. And through these corners, the body roll is actually reasonably well kept and hitting these kind of cracks in the road mid-corner doesn't disturb the car. It seems like a reasonably well-tuned suspension. I'm also impressed with how solid it feels through these corners. And the Camry engines do feel uh, kind of nostalgic, like something you would get out of an older car. It's just kind of coarse. When you start taking corners at higher speeds, body roll is still honestly kept under control. It does become more apparent that this isn't a sports sedan, but I'm not entirely hating this. The engine transmission combo is just uninspiring. A bigger takeaway for me is that the XLE I drove has 91,000 miles, yet absorbed the imperfections of the back road like new. The only thing I noticed was a little more vibration from the engine. Once on better roads, I discovered that the Camry is more capable than I originally believed. And the steering is numb, but is well-weighted and predictable with a good suspension setup, so it feels competent. 
The TRD's V6 and exclusive track tune suspension, sway bars, bracing, bigger brakes, quicker steering, and slightly lower ride height make this one hell of a Camry on paper, but its purpose to me remains confusing. I'll reserve further thoughts for a dedicated TRD review. Something that does make this sort of pleasing to drive is that aforementioned visibility. I also have to compliment the seats. They have a kind of grippy insert here on the SE and XSE trims. And that does do a decent job of holding you in. So when it comes to safety features, you're going to have Toyota's Safety Sense standard, which includes adaptive cruise control, lane keep assist, uh, autonomous braking. It's version 2.5. The only option there is blind spot monitoring, which comes standard on the XLE, but available on base and SE. Now, what about reliability? This generation initially struggled with the powertrain control module. After a reflash, problems dropped off. There was also a fuel system and pump recall. Some people have reported bad batteries batteries and a draw on the system. Others report interior rattles. I will add I noticed a slight plastic creaking noise in the 90,000 mile XLE I drove. There are also more rare miscellaneous reports like clogged AC drain hoses. Overall, this generation seems to have less big money problems so far than the previous gens. If reliability is a top priority for you, the Camry is still a good bet. Toyota knows that this is the calling card for the Camry, but for the last two decades, they've wanted to convince people that the nameplate is about more than outlasting grandpa. It wasn't until this generation, though, where they actually gave it more virtues, like a taut suspension, confident steering, and in my opinion, style, which can admittedly go overboard in certain ways, but it looks and feels more special. It's far from perfect. I still prefer how the Accord feels on a back road, and that has a slightly more luxurious, practical interior, but the Camry offers a simple, comfortable experience with quality you can trust, like it always has, just with a dash of personality and less sweat under stress. Combo that with arguably the best hybrid powertrain in the business, a gutsy V6, or the available all-wheel drive, and it can fit many needs. If you want a low-drama car for the long run, or a confident handling, straightforward, comfy sedan, the Camry is an option I wouldn't overlook. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like to help me take on the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe and hit the bell for more. And thank you to my loyal patrons. I'll catch you in the next one.